I'm here at Abstracted Directions, and I'm making these videos to describe in more detail the newest work that I've been uh, making for this exhibition at the Yucca Valley Art Center. I've decided to start with the city of Los Angeles, and I'm standing right in front of, I think, one of the best Los Angeles paintings I've made. It's uh, called Tinseltown. This particular work has really got some ex extreme detail with the topography of the Los Angeles Basin, the highway system, the mountain uh, structure of the Los Angeles Basin. And then my little play on Tinseltown is a reference to all the talent that you have in Hollywood and playing on the Hollywood star maps. If you're a tourist and you go to Los Angeles, at some point you probably figure maybe I should go to Hollywood. And when you do go to Hollywood, you find all kinds of people come out of the woodwork and they want to sell you a star map. For years, being a native Angelino in, in so many ways, uh, and I'm going to explain that here in a second, I would have a little fun with the idea that you could get a star map. They were usually vague. They were usually out of date. If you tried to follow one, you probably weren't going to find any celebrities in the, in the Hollywood Hills. Anyway, uh, I said that I was a uh, native Angelino. That's not technically correct unless you think of the city as I do as the city of greater Los Angeles or greater LA. I actually grew up, let me get oriented for a second, right over here on this side is the San Gabriel Valley and Pasadena is right up here. It was the uh, original suburb of Los Angeles. There were many, but Pasadena in this case was a very important suburb. Uh, the first freeway that was built connected Pasadena to downtown Los Angeles, still called the Pasadena Freeway. And I had uh, my first 10 years on the planet uh, living in Pasadena. So I've been connected to the place all these years and I've made it uh, my business to do uh, landscape paintings about the city. So this is one of the newest and I think one of the best ones. Let's, let's go down. I wanted to show you, this, this obviously is a study. Whenever I do a big piece, I try and make uh, a number of studies just to be sure that I've got the composition that I want and that I could build up the momentum to do a very large and important piece such as we see at the beginning. This I wanted to talk about because it's the oldest painting of Los Angeles. I believe it was 1996. At that point, I was living in the New York City area. Anyway, I was out visiting uh, my, my dear and now unfortunately departed friend, Sudad Shaheen, who had an artist studio in Venice, California. He said, uh, Spellman, why don't, why don't you stay for a couple weeks and you can share my studio? So it was a real opportunity, and I did. So in 1996, I did a number of these Los Angeles paintings. They're white paintings. At that point, I was doing all these uh, New York City white paintings, where I would, again, I'd take the city design, the topography, and then just use white paint. This is Permalba white paint, so it doesn't yellow. And this is probably one of my most uh, photorealistic depictions of the city. If I look, I can see all the reservoirs up here in the Santa Monica Mountains. I can see all the gravel pits that come down along the San Gabriel River. Pasadena is here, downtown Los Angeles, Marina del Rey, the Pacific Ocean, San Fernando Valley, Verdugo. Anyway, I've made a point of being a landscape artist, but not painting what you see across the way as an observer who might look obliquely on the landscape. Uh, all the way back in the early 80s in my graduate studies, I realized I wanted to do something different. And I basically latched on to the uh, satellite image and the map as a way to make 
my landscape paintings. So this is a, a very exact one. Another one where I really got going on the tinsel. There's, there's a lot of stars in this particular one. They have a, a nice glitter to them. And there's also a, a bit of a reference to the uh, night sky and what the city of angels looks like when you fly into LAX and you see all the lights of the city. If you're talking like that, you probably know that uh, along the way I had seen Peter Alexander's paintings of just that subject. He used an oblique view looking down on the city. And mine is a straight down map like view, so they're really quite different. But there's, there's still kind of a reference to the night scene. This, this one actually uh, glows in the dark if you have it in uh, a place where it's not as bright as this wonderful gallery. The light reflects from the uh, reflecting pieces of glitter. Along those lines, I'm also making a oblique reference to the, the one very well-known school that's based and has come from Southern California is called Light and Space. I have two tie-ins with that. Uh, the other name for Light and Space was uh, Finnish fetish. Uh, artists that were very particular about the Finnish, and God knows I am. And if you were a painter and you were in Finnish fetish, you were inclined to experiment with unusual materials including enamel. So these are enamel paints and I have that obsessive finish that's in me. But adding the glitter gives it this interactive and it, it is now reflecting the light. And as, as you move, I see all these glistening things that I can perceive. And light and space was very much about perception, the perception of light, the awareness of observation. And I believe these paintings have an element of that as well. Let me go down to the far end, and we have two more of the Tinsel Town. These are done with metallic paints. This is a close up of Hollywood in the, the Laurel Canyon area. Always fascinated by the Laurel Canyon because of its connections with the music scene of Los Angeles. And you will hear me speaking about music in these uh, clips that are coming. That's uh, another one of my main subjects besides landscape, besides the satellite image. This is a, a bigger view of the whole city, you know, very metallic. And this one here is uh, the last one on this wall. Basically, this one I think is still forming. One of the things that's unusual, the enamel I put on too thickly on purpose, knowing that it's gonna wrinkle and deform. And I've been doing that for some years now. These particular paintings are uh, about a third generation of putting too much enamel paint. So I know that it's gonna continue to wrinkle. And I know the patterns of the city have not completely formed. And when this wrinkles up, it'll look a little bit like a circuit board or a little bit like an urban maze, and there'll be all kinds of extra detail in the uh, street forms of the city. That's one of the things I like to do. I experiment with the materials, and as I experiment, I, I, I see what happens, and then I adjust accordingly. I, I find it absolutely fascinating that I'm still finding ways of manipulating materials.